Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is the day I've been waiting for weeks. It feels like forever, but for a couple weeks. <laughs> Honestly, it does feel like forever. But today is the day that I get to do a review and tutorial on the Disney and ColourPop Villains Collection. I can't explain how excited I am for this. Like, just this collection in general, so excited. But if you want to see how I got this look here, keep watching, see what my thoughts are on this collection. Just so you guys know, I didn't buy everything, I just bought a few things. I try to get one of everything. The only thing I didn't get was any of the glosses. Honestly, just wasn't super interested in those. So, unfortunately, I don't have any of those. But uh, for the most part, I got like one of each thing. So, if you want to see how I got this look, keep watching. So, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the packaging. Like, I don't know why I'm so excited to show you the packaging of this. Okay, no, I know why. Because it's amazing. So, the first thing I'll show you is the packaging of the Misunderstood eyeshadow palette. Like, look at all of this detail. This is so beautiful. Like, I can't... I can't get over it. Amazing. And I kept everything in their boxes just because I wanted to show you what it looked like. Even like the inside of the boxes are really pretty. The pattern on the inside of the box is the same thing that's on the palette itself. So I'll try to show you, like, you can just kind of see with this right here, the whole inside of the box looks like that. And here is the palette. Like, I seriously cannot get over the packaging. And I know I'm going to say this so much through this video, but I love it. And then the top of the palette has the same sort of detail as the outside of the box does. But we'll go ahead and just show you what the inside of the palette looks like. Like, this is gorgeous. I do kind of wish... There were more matte shades in here and some darker shades, but overall, I mean, look at this packaging, like, but yeah, overall, I'm super happy with the shades in here. Oh my god. And that green shade is speaking to me, but also love the purple shade. Probably gonna do something with purple, but yes, look at this. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the eyeshadow palette. I guess we'll just go ahead and swatch it. I don't know, like, the correct way to swatch these things because I feel like it's just so weird to, like, do it on your arm and then be like this. <laughs> but we're gonna try it that way this time because, you know, why not? I think I'm just gonna hold my arm out this whole time and just kind of go like that. This first shade is the first one in the palette. It's the white shade. It's called No Spots. And that's super pigmented for a white shade too, which is really nice. Usually the lighter shades don't even show up on my arms. So that is nice. <laughs> and then the one next to it is a shimmer called Mongrels. Look at how gorgeous that is. That is beautiful and this one is a shade that i am honestly the most excited about and it's diablo so it's that super like electric green these swatches are almost like effortless like i'm not going back in with them what you see is what you get so it's really nice that they're automatically just coming out super pigmented i mean obviously you can't just completely judge a palette off of the swatches because it's going to look different when you put it on your eye some palettes will look better when they're swatched some will look way better when you actually work with them and then this is kind of i wanted to call it a taupey shade but i really don't it's really more of like kind of an orangey brown ish and this one is devious and then we have another matte color tragic so there's that one right there this is the first row i'm i'm in love i keep saying that but i'm gonna keep saying it more because that's just the only way to describe it so 
judging by the way that I've swatched this already, I'm going to remove what's on my arm now and go to the second row because I really don't think I'm going to be able to fit everything all on here unless I just start going to my elbow, which I definitely could do. I'm gonna remove that and then go to the second row. Now that I got all of that off of my arm, we're gonna go into the second row of shades. The first one is going to be Underworld. And I don't know why I haven't said this yet. If you didn't already know this about me, I love Disney. I mean, I got engaged to Disneyland, which is really, <laughs> like, amazing. Dean, I love you. <laughs> you know, just casually saying that in this video. But, you know, I love Disney. I am super excited about this, like, just in general. I mean, the Disney Princess one that ColourPop did sometime last year, that one was cool. Honestly, I didn't buy anything out of it just because I felt like I really didn't need any of it. And now that I have the Villains collection, the Princess one is still on sale, which I think it is. Maybe I'll pick some things up from there, but I mean, the eyeshadow palette, I just really, it didn't really do that much for me. And like, I'm such a huge like eyeshadow person that like, if I'm not going to buy the eyeshadow palette, then I'm kind of not interested in the other products. But if I like the eyeshadow palette, then I'm going to look at everything and be like, yes. This will go nicely together. If it's still available, like I said, I think it is. Maybe I'll pick some things up now, but originally I just like, mm, I don't know. But this Villains one, yes. That's all I have to say is give me everything. I didn't buy everything because that's expensive. I honestly probably would have. <laughs> so, Underworld. I really, really wish they used Yzma from Emperor's New Groove. I really wish they used her. But obviously, they can't include everybody. So, as far as the selection of the villains go, I think they did a pretty good job. I'm not sure if it's nearing the Disney collection. I mean, the princess collection. I honestly didn't look into that, but that would be interesting to see if they use the same villains from the same princesses that they used. If I forgot to mention it, so this one right here is Underworld. This one right next to it is Pain and Panic. The one, this one here, probably my second favorite shade in here, and it's Forest of Th Thrones. <laughs> I was gonna say Thrones. I'm just on like Game of Thrones like mindset. I'm so excited for it to come back, and I'm really sad that it's the last season, but that shade, that purple one, is Forest of Thorns, not Thrones, <laughs> by the way. So yes, it's this one right here. It's kind of purpley with a little bit of a pink hint to it. Maybe it just looks more pink on here. In person, it doesn't really look that pink to me. Okay, and then the next shade. I believe it's Flotsam. I have no idea. I don't remember if I'm saying that right, so. But I believe it's Flotsam. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's this one right here. And then we have this really pretty blue matte shade in The Fates. Swatching a little bit patchy, but that's kind of to be expected with darker matte shades. I love these colors. These two especially. Obviously the other ones are pretty. Are they super, super unique? Not really, but they are pretty, so. Go ahead and clean my arm off and do the last row of the palette. Okay, so this last row is starting off with, I guess it's like a charcoaly color. I wanted to say it was like a black with like sparkle, but when I'm looking at it before I'm about to swatch it, like on my finger, it definitely looks more like a charcoaly color to me. And I'm totally unintentionally flipping you guys off. Sorry about that. But we'll keep looking. Let's look at that shade. So that one's really pretty too with all the little glitters in it. Definitely need to clean my finger off after that one. Okay, and the next shade is Sing. Was Oh my god. That's gorgeous. Honestly, think that... This swatch is out to be so much prettier than I thought it was going to look like. It's a really pretty, like, burgundy wine color. That one's really pretty. I mean, it does look pretty in the palette, but it just swatched out. I'm even more excited to try that shade. I should probably count how many times I say love in this video because 
already feel like it's an obnoxious amount. Like, I wouldn't normally say that that much in like a week span or something. But I'm just saying it a lot right now. I might say these next two wrong. I don't know. I think I'm going to say them right. But this third shade on the bottom row is this bluish... Almost actually kind of looks a little purple, but it's Jetsam. Swatch that out. That one's really pretty too. It's kind of like a blue gray shift, which honestly, I love shades that do that where they, I guess you can say they're kind of like iridescent or they're just like color like shifting where like the light picks it up and it looks more like a different color. I love this. So yes, that one's super pretty. And then we'll go to Facile. It's gonna be like a darker green color. It actually doesn't swatch out to be as dark. And I'm telling you guys now, I love this like jewel tone going on right here. This is so pretty. And we'll make it a little bit closer. There you go. These are gorgeous. And then the last shade in the palette is 101. And it's like a matte dark gray and that actually swatched out pretty good not super patchy maybe towards the, the middle of it it kind of came in a little patchy so i'll just show you these kind of further away but this yeah this palette i'm super happy with it like i mentioned earlier i kind of wish I don't know, I just, I understand the importance of like neutral shades and like more golds and champagnes and stuff, but I'm kind of, kind of tired of them. So I feel like for a villain's palette, this one just had so many of them. Maybe if it had like an extra row of like more darker colors, more just more colorful options, it would like even out, but I just feel like... There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more neutral shades, and only three of them are mattes. Maybe it should have been more mattes instead, but overall, I mean, I think it's really pretty. I'll just show you the palette again, and I'm seriously in love with this packaging. Honestly, I'd be okay with just framing it and never using it, but like, I'm gonna use it all the time. Okay, so that was the eyeshadow palette. I kind of want to keep it though, like, should I frame it? I don't, I don't know. It's just the packaging is so pretty that I feel guilty for recycling it. I don't know. I just feel guilty for getting rid of it. And the next thing, we'll just stay on topic of eye stuff. I did get two of the Jelly Much shadows. To be honest, I didn't really like the idea of these for a while. I know they've already, Colourpop's already released Jelly Much shadows before. I don't know how many they have. I feel like we have a decent amount now, but I just was not interested in them. I'm weird with texture and I kind of felt like they wouldn't dry down, that they'd be like sticky or something, but I swatched these on my hand when I got them and they seem like they would dry down nicely, so I'm excited that I got two of the shades just to try them because originally I wasn't going to buy them at all. I'm glad that I at least got two of them just so I can try them and make an opinion from there. And the one, one of the shades that I got, I actually bought with the intentions of possibly using it as a highlight, just in case I didn't like it as a shadow. And I definitely tried that the other day, and she is glittery. Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll use it as a highlight, but maybe just like a little bit, but I was not used to like that much glitter, like on my cheeks. Just like, okay. <laughs> Still would be pretty, but... You know, I don't know if I let, I, I don't know if I'll do it or not. So the first Jelly Mutt shadow I got is in Perfectly Wretched. You can see Cruella on here. I think that's so cool. Like I just, I love, 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 love this packaging. And I've said love a million times. I need a better description word, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'll show you the front of it. And I love the little foil writing. Like I just love everything. So super cute packaging. I could stare at it all day. So we'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. But let me show you the top of that. But this is the one that I was thinking of using for a highlight. We might try that out today. We'll see how I'm feeling. But look at how pretty that is. I'm just going to take a little bit from the top of the package. I'm going to just do this one on the top of my hand. 
try to make this a little more prominent since it does kind of get lost with my skin tone a little bit but that's so pretty you can't really see all of like how glittery it actually is well i guess you can but she is glittery and then i did get another jelly much shadow the shade spindle and of course gotta show you the packaging so cute I knew keeping everything in the box would be kind of challenging for this video. I had to do it because you needed to see what it looked like if you haven't seen the packaging already, which I'm sure you probably have, but if you haven't, you needed to see it. And I just feel so guilty for recycling it. Like I want to, I, I kind of just want to keep it. And we'll just go ahead. I already started putting it on my finger, but that's what it looks like. I don't know if anyone knows this i just i love purple purple anything honestly with makeup anymore i feel like purple blue green i, I, I want it purple just speaks to me i guess and then that's what spindle looks like thinking i'm gonna use both of these today somehow the next thing i'm gonna show you is the glitterly obsessed and i wanted these so bad and i got them actually i got these two off of the Disney website, but they sold out on the ColourPop website and I realized that they were selling them on Disney's website, so I got them off of there. I believe it says face, or not face. Is it face? Is it face and body? I honestly don't, I don't know, maybe it says somewhere on here. But originally I thought you can use it on your eyes and then I saw someone, I don't remember who it is, said that it wasn't eye safe. So I don't know if I'm willing to risk that. Originally I was and I had my contact get stuck under my eyelid last night when I was taking it out and that was super painful. So I don't think I'm willing to get these chunky glitters stuck in my eyeballs. Originally I totally was okay with it. I was like, yeah, whatever, fine. But I need to find some other way of using these and see what I can do. So the first one is, do I look like I care? So pretty. I don't want to get it out of focus so you can kind of see more of the glitter and then back in focus. So we'll go ahead and swatch it. Just from this alone, I'm going to have glitter on me for days. That's okay though. That's how it swatches. And then I really like glitter, like, all out of focus. It's kind of got, like, a pinky purple vibe going on there. So that one is Do I Look Like I Care? And the other one is Anomaly. The shades are actually kind of similar. I posted an Instagram story with them. Honestly, I realized after that you couldn't really tell the difference between them, but... They definitely are different, and you can see it more in person. Anomaly is this really, really pretty kind of, I want to say more like baby blue, but it's really pretty. And we'll show you, I'm literally like a hot, glittery mess right now. You can't really see how much glitter is on my hands, but it's, it's there. And then this is what this one looks like. Try to get that one out of focus a little bit too. Not sure if anyone else appreciates stuff like that out of focus so you can kind of see the little specks of glitter, but I, I love it. And then these are the two together. So you can definitely see a difference. So this one's more purple and then this one is more blue. And then we'll kind of get them out of focus a little bit. Look at them. Oh my god. I really... I'm, I'm really like, I'm so sad I can't put these on my eyeballs. I'm so sad. <sighs> Trying to think of another way of doing it. I mean, other than your class, classical, <laughs> classic like festival like look where you kind of put it right in here. Try not to get super close to your eye and I think you'd be okay. I was thinking of putting it on my eyebrows for some reason or like in my hair. I'm not sure. I think you should be able to use it in your hair, but I need to find a way to use these babies because... I'm so, so sad I can't use them on my eyes. Unless I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive I saw somewhere that you couldn't use them on your eyes. I mean, this is super chunky glitter, so I would imagine that would not be fun getting it stuck in your eye. Especially if you had, like, contacts in Oh, God, no, I can't. And I still have a couple other things to swatch, and I'm just letting you know that I am a super glittery. I'm just... I'm not sure how well you can see that, but your girl is glittery. Not even gonna try to get all that glitter off because I already know that it's it's kind of 
it's a resident on my arm for right now. The other two things, I actually have three more things. We'll actually go with the highlight first because the last time when I got everything in the mail, the lipsticks really stained for some reason on my arm. So, but the highlight that I decided to get is the Cruella one. It's this one right here and it's in the shade, you idiots, you fools, you imbeciles. And then this is the packaging of the actual highlight. I love whoever decided to do this like neon, light sort of thing is a genius. It, it looks so good. And honestly, like I feel like if I didn't even like anything, the packaging is good enough to be like, I want to buy it for the packaging. So, <laughs> which is kind of like, ooh, I don't know. But here is a highlight. Honestly, at the time, this was the only one that I saw that I thought would be something that I would wear. Then I looked at them some more, the more that swatches were coming out, and I believe there was another one that I kind of wish I got, and I'm not sure. I think they have these at Ulta, so I might actually pick up whatever one that was. I think it was the Maleficent one, or it was the Evil Queen. I'm not sure, but I might go pick it up if I really like this. And then this is swatch on my hand um, but the other ones just looked this has like a kind of I guess you can say I don't know if it's necessarily purple but it definitely has some sort of shift to it but it is the only one that I guess it's kind of like a I don't know it's like a golden shift but also maybe purpley maybe that's just my hand making it look that way but it's the only one that I thought would work for me. A lot of them just seemed like too dark, darker than what I normally would wear at least. And then we have these two lipsticks right here. Like, look at that. Like I said, genius. Whoever did the neon lights thing, it's, you're a genius. Not sure if anyone wants to know, but Ursula is definitely one of my favorite villains. Ursula, Hades, and Yzma easily my top three villains easily and this might be the reason why my hair is red but little mermaid was 100 percent my favorite movie growing up i would just like sit there staring at the tv trying to sing like when there was like nothing there just singing telling my mom that i wanted to watch the movie so <laughs> obviously i needed to get something ursula and this was the best in my opinion, out of her collection. And I don't think I actually mentioned this earlier. Each villain has their own, like, collection within the collection that came with, ooh, I want to say it was a highlight, a lipstick, a lip gloss, and they also had jelly muches, but they weren't actually included in their little box on there separately. And then that is the shade right there that actually turns out way more red on there than it looks on my hand when i'm looking at it it's kind of more of like a wine tone with a little bit of like a purple undertone to it you don't see it too much on the swatch i'm going to regrettably say this probably but i honestly haven't watched the movie with this guy hey I, I don't know i just i know i've seen like parts of it but i don't think i've ever watched like the full movie and i believe that needs to change and this watch is going to be kind of rough because i my veins kind of mess it up i wanted to say i, I flex my veins but <laughs> that sounds kind of weird and let me show you really fast and then that's the shade right there. This is the closest to like a more nude color that I could find out of the whole collection. Felt like there were a lot of like reds and then just a lot of other colors that I wouldn't wear um, super often. It looks super 90s to me, which I am definitely here for. I keep putting everything back in the box. I think I just don't want to get rid of it. Oh, and because I didn't say it, it's Dr. Facilier. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that okay. <laughs> okay, so that's, that is everything swatched. Now I need to do my makeup. I obviously did my eyebrows and I kept looking at it and 
thinking that I had like some like smudged part there, which I don't know if I do, I don't know. But this is the rough draft of my eyebrows. Usually I do them with dip brow and then I go in with a brow mascara later and then sometimes with more pomade because I tend to erase my brows when I'm doing my makeup. Like I don't know if I just dip too close to them, if I should do them later, but I feel like doing your brows first is important because if for whatever reason you don't have the whole time of finishing your makeup, if you have your eyebrows on, I'm totally like fine with like leaving the house with just my eyebrows on, you know? But if you did your eyebrows later and you had everything else on and then you didn't have your eyebrows on, at least for me because my eyebrows are so, they're just so, I'm gonna say thin, like I do have a lot of hair on my eyebrows. I don't, I don't know. They're not, they're just not full. So they look better when they are filled in versus just not having any product on them at all. Okay, so yes, like I said, have my eyebrows done and we're going to prime our eyelids now. I'm not gonna go too in depth with what I'm using today other than the ColourPop stuff because basically everything else isn't ColourPop and just for the sake of the review, you slash tutorial slash whatever you want to call this. We're just going to kind of focus on the ColourPop products only and then go from there. And then I usually would prime my eyelids with a concealer, but I'm just doing an eyeshadow primer today and seeing how that goes. Try to hide the redness. Guess it would help if I brought my mirror out. <laughs> so now that the eyelids are primed and set, we're going to get back into this eyeshadow palette. I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do today. And now that I'm looking at this again, I don't know what I want to do. Obviously, I really want to go with like a darker eye because it's villains, you know? Why am I going to go with like... A super neutral eye if I want to be like dark and villainous you know honestly I feel like this palette kind of forces you just to use the fates and maybe I'm just not like creative enough <laughs> with my makeup to kind of pick out the other shades that maybe I should use instead but if I'm gonna do like darker I feel like the only shade that I have really to use is the fates for my crease so I kind of wanted to do a cut crease but honestly looking at these shades now I'm really not sure what I want to do. So we're going to start with the fates. And I need to do this super light handed because going in at first with these darker blue shades is intimidating. Just cleaned all my brushes last night and they're all doing some weird, weird stuff. Kind of just sticking out. Kind of looks like me when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use this guy. Like I said, not going too into detail with the brushes and all of that stuff, just for the sake of being able to just focus on the ColourPop products. I do not want to use this brush. And I don't know if I said this already, but we're gonna go in with the Fates. So we are going to show you that one again. Super, super beautiful. I'm pretty sure I said this last time, but I'm so intimidated by going in with blues first. Like, you have no idea. I don't know how people can just like, yes, I'm going in with blue right now, and it's going to be perfect and fine, and nothing's going to be wrong with it, because I look at it and I'm like, dear lord. <laughs> How? <laughs> Why? Like, even looking at this right now, this is not looking good. And I don't think it really has anything to do with the shadow itself, so I'm not gonna say, like, ooh, it's the shadow, but, like, it's most likely me. But we are gonna try to make this look as beautiful as possible. I'm definitely gonna go with the first, do this eye first, and then I'll do the other eye off camera. That way we can kind of figure out what's going on first. Because I am trying to figure out what's going on and ugh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I don't remember if I said this already, but I do want to try some sort of cut crease action today. I've only done them like 
I've only done a cut crease like two to three times before. So it might not be the best cut crease you've ever seen, but we're going for it. <laughs> I just have such a hard time with blue shades. I just... Why did I do this to myself? I don't know. I just feel like they require so much patience and if you know me, I'm not the most patient person in the world, so... Really trying to extend this blue in here without this ending up looking kind of scary, but we will see. It is a little patchy, but honestly, it could just be me. We'll go with that for now. Whew, this is gonna be a doozy. I had an idea and now I'm like trying to pull it off this a cut crease action and I'm definitely gonna try to show you guys how I do this. I'm not gonna say that it's the correct way because like I said, I've only done this like two, like three times before. Not super comfortable doing them yet. So I may or may not actually show this on camera because it's a little bit of trial and error. Let's see. I still haven't really mastered what area I feel like it looks the best. So I've done my cut creases up higher and I guess there's a such thing as half cut creases. I'm gonna try not to talk through this though because I'm having issues. Probably not the best idea to try to do this after only literally having coffee today and I'm like shaky. Okay, try to clean this up just a little bit. Is it my best work? Probably not. Okay. And then I want to do... I'm gonna go in with the Jelly Much Shadow in Spindle. Just what I needed, more coffee. For anyone who wants to see this one again, this is Spindle. Ugh. Let me see if this is gonna be buildable. I may, okay, that's actually really pretty. I'm gonna get a chunk of this in my eye though, so. Sorry I'm not really talking that much through this. I'm just really trying to make this work. Can't even really see it on the camera. I'm gonna try just, of course, a little bit with my finger. I really want this to be... I feel like I probably needed to have something underneath it. I don't know how well you can see that. Probably needed something underneath it. Like if I had like a matte purple or something underneath it, maybe it would look a little more pigmented. By the way, I mean, it still looks really pretty, but it's a little translucent a little bit. Maybe I... It's kind of weird, so I'm trying to build it up, but maybe I need to wait for it to dry first and then kind of do more. And before I try to go closer into my crease, I'm gonna take that Forest of Thorns color, that one right there, and do it kind of in the middle to see. I almost feel like I probably should have done this color first and then done the Jelly Much over, over top of that. Because yeah, the Jelly Much is just kind of flaking off. I think I need to. I'm just gonna remove a little bit of the 
and jelly much especially in this middle part to get that forest of thorns on there i will say though these colors together are looking really pretty yeah, the jelly match is just kind of, I mean, maybe I just used too much of it. Or, like I said, I definitely probably should have put something underneath it. But it is kind of just flaking off a little bit. But, like I said, maybe I just used too much. Then, let's see. I kind of want to do that jet some color. Grab another brush. So we'll use this one right here for the ooh, for the outer crease. Outer. <laughs> outer crease. I know wish I could see this shade without the other one behind it, but it definitely is kind of poking through. It's really pretty too. To mesh those two together. Okay, that's actually not bad. If I'm gonna be able to do this on the other eye, we'll see. Kind of debating whether or not I should. I probably should keep going in with that Forest of Thorns color and then do a little more jelly much in the corner. I got fallout pretty bad from that last shade. That's the whole reason why I do my foundation later. So I can just completely avoid that. Because other than that, I mean, fallout doesn't bother me at all. I feel like it's just super common and you really just need to take some makeup remover and clean it up later. So I'm just putting that Forest of Thorns color over most of that jelly much color that I used earlier and then probably go back in with the jelly much color. I need to get closer to where I cut the crease though. And experiencing a land of fallout. go in with my finger a little bit. I don't know if I'm 100% happy with how this look is going. Alright, we're gonna just take a little more of the jelly much since I kind of just covered it up. I'll try to do it on the inner corner more. Yeah, I definitely think it's one of those things that probably should just be applied to the top of a shadow versus trying to use it all on its own. At least with this shade here, it doesn't seem as pigmented as what I thought it was going to be. I think everything is just a learning process too, seeing how everything works. I've never used the Jelly Mutt shadows before. Maybe I'm just not using it to its best ability. <laughs> And take what's left of what was left on my brush from the fates. Kind of try to blend that out more. And now that I'm here, I also just want to take more of that blue shade and kind of pop it into the middle a little bit more. To create its own little shade. Mixing those two. Okay. So, back with the fates. Trying to blend this out a little bit more. Then 100% going in with a different brush and buffing that out. I'm gonna go with that lighter matte shade, Tragic. And kinda just soften up the edges. I feel like if I don't buff things out with the brush as much as I want to, I always just do it with my finger. Alright, so that's not... it's okay. I feel like it'll look really pretty with, with lashes on, but for now... Definitely not what I was hoping for. I think overall, like, I'm happy with how the shadows are performing. Maybe I'm just not happy with, like, the exact look that I decided to go for. And with the blues, like, I just have a hard time with blues. 
So, probably not the best choice on my part. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm going to do everything I did to this eye on the other eye and then I'll come back. So I just wanted to check back in before I do the rest of my face. So I did eyeliner and then I added a couple more things off camera. So I was trying to do this eye a little bit differently than how I did this one just because I was having a hard time with the Jelly Munch shadows and I wanted to see if there was another way that I could do it. I just feel like this was not the look to do. Maybe I should have done a little more simple since I've never used the Jelly Munch shadows before but I'm just gonna run you guys through what I did when I was off camera. So just super simple but I did mongrels went into my inner corner this right here and then no spots was underneath my brow bone just a little bit i might go in and do more touch-ups and see what else i can do i'm not super happy with how this looks so but i'm hoping that with eyelashes it'll look better but i can show you kind of what we have right now yeah even the blue just looks really patchy i'm just not happy with the blue kind of wishing i didn't do the blue but just trying to make it as cohesive as possible like i said like a million times before blues are just hard for me i don't even understand like i don't even believe that there's like a not patchy blue ever like in the history of blue eyeshadows at least the darker ones, but it also could be me, so, you know. I think I just shouldn't have, I don't know. I should have done something a little bit differently, but I didn't want to do anything neutral, and I felt like the blue was probably the best shade to, like, build off of. But I'm gonna do everything off of the camera for now. I'm gonna do my face makeup, eyelashes, and then come back to do lip color and highlight, and then we will be all done here. We're back. I did couple more things. <laughs> I just wasn't really happy with how this was looking, so I embellished it a little bit. And I think that's the best way of describing it. So I just went in with the with a glitter eyeliner and kind of did a little more. So this is the finished eye look. And then I also forgot earlier to do some eyeshadow underneath my... Just right here. I don't remember. Words. So yeah. This is the finished look now, but I do think that the eyeliner really adds to it and kind of does more of what I wanted the look to look like that I wasn't able to do with the Jelly Mutt shadows, but it's kind of hard to like judge a product when it's like the first time you've ever used them, so I don't really know if like how I was using it was the best way to use it. Anyways, everything else is pretty much finished. I just need to do the highlight and pick my lipstick. So we're going to go with the only highlighter from this collection that I have. So the Cruella one. If you want to see it again, it's this one right here. And I'm going to try just with a brush and then go from there, see how it looks. And this actually looks super glittery. So we will see how this goes. Alright, not bad. Not quite as like pigmented as I thought it would be. Like it doesn't show up as much as I thought it would. It's still really pretty. I'm trying to see. Yeah, that actually is really pretty. But I'm going to get the brush wet and then see. So that's not bad. Let's do it right in the cupid's bow area. Yeah, I don't know. That's not bad. I don't know if I would use it every day. Kind of wish I got other highlights too to see what they looked like. But we will go with this one for now. Honestly, just not super happy with how this looked. Which is kind of like, I don't know. But I'm just going to finish this off with the lipsticks. I'm going to go with the Ursula one. And, of course, I don't have a lip liner to go with it. I'm so not used to, like, normal lipsticks. I literally have, like, honestly, I think these are my only two. I just, for the longest time, would never go with normal lipsticks. They're always liquid lipsticks. So, I don't have an eye or an eyeliner. 
I don't have a lip liner for this, so we're just going to wing it and hope that it works. Okay, so with the lipstick on, this is the finished look. So overall, I'm super happy with all of these products. I think that I probably should have just gone with a different eye look. Not super comfortable with blue eyeshadow, so I'm not super happy with how everything turned out. But that doesn't mean that I don't like everything. Everything that I've tried so far, I really like. I love the eyeshadow palette. I feel like it was pretty easy to work with. And I mean, this shade of lipstick is beautiful. The highlight, I mean, yeah, it looks good on. I don't know, it's just... It's a little bit different than what I thought it was going to look like, and I had a hard time picking out a shade of the highlights that I actually was like really interested in. I think this one was probably the one closest to one that I would wear, but you know what? Hold on. I totally forgot. These are definitely better applied with your fingers, and I just, I feel like I haven't used a lot of ColourPop stuff in a really long time, so I'm just gonna apply that a little more with my finger. And... Yeah, I think that's coming up a little bit more. I don't know. I just... I guess I just feel like it's got more of like a bluey, like purple tint than I noticed. But it's definitely... You know, I think I just got blue on my face and I didn't get rid of it. And it's just kind of like... I don't know. I am a mess right now. A mess. So we're just going to ignore this and... It's not bad, but yeah, this is a great face. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I just have a little bit of blue eyeshadow like fallout even though I swear I cleaned it, but maybe I didn't clean it all off because there's a little bit of blue going on right there. And you know what, I'm just done with this look because I'm never using blue eyeshadow again, ever. But overall, I'm really happy with everything. I'm just complaining so much. So I'm really happy with everything, but I just think I picked like the wrong colors to work with, at least, like I said, the blue, blah, but yes. And the highlight, maybe there's another one, but I am i don't think I'll really use this one that often, but it is pretty, so, you know, it's pretty, but I'm, and, you know, it's not going to be one that I'm going to go to all the time, but this is a themed collection, so I feel like there's not too many people are going to be using this on the daily, but this eyeshadow palette I definitely could use a lot, like, all the time. I am really impressed with it. This lipstick I also really like. It this totally reminds me of like, I swear it was like the first shade of lipstick I ever got. It was like a Rimmel one that was really similar to this. I don't remember what it was called. I want to say it was like, might have been like Bordeaux or something. But I don't know if they still have that color, but it reminds me of this. And I love it because it reminds me of like five years ago. So maybe even more than that, honestly. But other than that, I'm happy with everything. I really do like this lipstick. It's really comfortable. Like the lipstick, like the eyeshadow palette, the highlighter, like I said, mm, I wasn't super happy with the shade, like the ranges of highlight. This one is pretty, just wouldn't use it all the time. The glitterly obsessed guys, obviously I didn't get to use these. I don't even know how I'm going to use them now that I just can't use them on my eyes. So I'll need to figure out something to do with these. The jelly much, I need to kind of reevaluate and figure out what's the best way of using them because I didn't feel like I really got the full effect out of those as what I was hoping for. And it's funny because originally I wasn't even going to buy them anyways. And I really want to make them work now that I actually do have them. So that's, I think I covered everything. This is obviously the final look. Not bad, a little much. But it's Disney villains, so it's supposed to be that way. But yeah, we'll zoom in, take a little closer look at everything, and we will be on our way. I honestly kind of feel like Ursula right now. It's a beautiful collection. I'm just super excited about it. Like, I really wish Yzma was in it. I really do. But other than that, I'm pretty pleased with everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like it and subscribe to my channel and yeah, we'll see you next time.